Why? <laughs> this week. Nice for you. <laughs> by, the, by the way, do, do you smell something untoward? My feet! I beg your pardon? My feet! Speak back! Oh, no, no, not you, Arbley! <laughs> I would wash them, but my husband, he's crazy for the smell, likes to eat watermelon seeds from the toes. Oh, my dirt! Well, <clears throat> I love your shoes. Size three. Three inches. What size your waist? Sixteen. I got my first corset quite young. How <laughs> young? Fourteen. I was five. Corset hurts bad, huh? Oh, no. Only when I breathe. <laughs> my feet. Just the first couple years. Really? My mother, you see. How is she? Oh, dead long time now. Nice for her. <laughs> One day, mother said to me, forgiveness from heaven. Today is lucky day by the moon. Time to start binding. Ah. Then mother takes bandage, place on the inside of the instep, and carry over small toes to force them in and towards the soul. Then, bandage is wrapped around the heel, nice and forcefully. So heel and toes are drawn close. Real close together. I see. <clears throat> Why? To make feet pretty for future husband. <laughs> <laughs> that night, I tried to run away in the forest. My feet were on fire! <laughs> but mother found me and forced me to walk. <laughs> she was a good girl when her feet were bound and never cried. And so your poor feet never grew. Got smaller. Soon the flesh became putrescent. And little pieces slough off from the soul as toes began to putrefy. <laughs> and when I ate salted fish, my feet would swell and paws would drip. Oh, terrible. Then, mother will remove bindings and elastic cords with a needle and wipe the paws and blood and dead flesh. And every two weeks, I change the shoes. <laughs> Each pair, one quarter inch, oh, smaller. were practically dead. <laughs> so no more pain. Finally, all the bones were broken. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Four toes bent in nice neat roll toward the planter. When I was nine, father betrothed me to my uh, husband. Well, <coughs> I love your shoes. <coughs> and what are you being treated for? <laughs> me? Oh, hysteria. Hysteria? It's a disease of the ovaries. Hurts bad. Quite a bit of reading on the matter. Although my husband says reading makes me worse. My husband is a doctor. <laughs> Lucky he has treatment.
hit you? Well, he did prescribe the rest cure. Nice and peaceful. Oh, very. Six weeks on one's back in a dimly lit room. No reading, no visitors, no party. Worked good? Well, I came out dreaming, actually. But it was hardly my husband's fault. It, it seems, <clears throat> well, it seems I've had too much education. <laughs> and my uterus has atrophied commensurately. <laughs> Glad I never went to school. Lucky. When I was a little girl, my husband liked my little feet so much. I never left the bedroom. Well, children need rest. Man crazy for the golden lotus. Feel much love and pity for your suffering. The tiny steps, the whispered walk, feet make bodice larger, more attractive. Well, I assure you, it's a lot less fuss to wear a bustle. Bustle? Not natural. Also, the binding makes vagina tighter. <laughs> when I walk, whole lower part of my body is in state of tension. <laughs> so vagina becomes like a little you do know that erotic tendencies are one of the primary symptoms of ovarian disease. <clears throat> erotic tendencies are symptoms of disease? Well, obviously you do not keep abreast with modern sciences. <laughs> but what if husband insists on erotic tendencies? Well, that's not your tendency, dear. That's your duty. <sighs> and need we mention the perils of the... <clears throat> Vice. The vice? Leads to lesions, TB, dementia. I strap the children's hands down every night. <coughs> and catch it early because clitorectomy and cauterization can be quite costly. <laughs> Which one of you ladies was here first? She was! The doctor will be right with you. <laughs> Like an Irish woman. I just want to get him out! Just like the way I feel about my dick! 
Mit 